Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Psychic Medium Raymond Guzman, and today I'm going to be doing a celebrity psychic mediumship reading on Lisa Left Eye Lopez. And uh, she is, she uh, was one of the members of the group TLC. This is a girl group, a girl band, girl group of singers. It was comprised of her, Chili, and T Boz. Uh, they were a very popular girl group within the early 1990s, um, all the way through the 90s, uh, before Lisa's death. Um, and there's been a lot of requests for me to do this reading. Um, so I'm going to be focusing today on what I see, what caused her death, uh, you know, compared to what was, you know, put out in the media and what was really going on. What are the messages that she has today? Um, you know, from spirit. So when I get into, um, when I get into Lisa's soul, what I'm getting is that she was definitely, I'm going to start off by saying that she was very misunderstood. She was psychic. I know people listening are probably rolling their eyes, you know, and say, well, well, you say that a lot about a lot of singers. Well, there are a lot of singers, believe it or not, that are very spiritual. But when it comes to Lisa, she had the gift. If you look in her eyes, like in this, I chose this photograph for a reason. You can look at her eyes. There's a, there's a deep, like her eyes could see through your soul. There's a certain stare that a lot of uh, seers or people that uh, have spiritual abilities that can see like clairvoyance. Um, their eyes it automatically draw you in. And you can, um, there's this like, how did I say it? How would I explain this? Um. The, you, you can just see that they can see right through you. It's like kind of like you're taking it back. Some people, because I get told that a lot too when I uh, when I used to work a lot out, you know, in, in the public around people um, in different jobs that I had. Um, I did have a, a friend of mine that said, your eyes are just very striking. They always, it's like you can see into into the soul, you know, and they kind of found it kind of scary at times. And that's what I feel like Lisa, she had the ability, she had clairvoyance and she had mediumship abilities. She could see spirits. She knew uh, there were spirits around her. And I feel like she got to see, because like I said in, in the previous video that I did for, um, for uh, I believe it was uh, for Lil Peep, there is there are people that have the gift that can see the darker things in life. Uh, and darker spirits, darker entities, and then there's um, there's mediums that can see the light, uh, the the spirits that walk in God's white light that you know that are um, more holy. There's there's people that can see both. I'm one of those that can see both the good and the bad. And there's some people that just see the bad, and I feel like for Lisa she could see both as well. She could see the good and the bad, and so with her I feel like um, immediately what I'm getting is that you know getting into the girl group and the band you know, the TLC, the group, she was very happy in the beginning. They were all happy. But as time went by, money became an issue. They were not being paid what they were supposed to be being uh, paid, what they were making. I believe there was an interview in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure the year, but it was with T-Boss. And T-Boss spoke about how they had 75 uh, million records sold, or there were $75 million dollars something like that and they were supposed to get a chunk of that and they only got her and chili got like 50,000 out of that 75 million so that kind of gives you a glimpse but there was also another um like award ceremony in which all three girls were up on stage and uh they asked them about you know how they thought about what did they thought about their fame about fame you know being in this business um, and they, um, you know, Lisa got up to the mic. They called her to the mic. Um, so those of you that haven't seen that, you may want to go ahead and go to YouTube to see that interview uh, or that, that award ceremony. Uh, and she says that um, how could they be broke if they've sold 10 million records, you know? Uh, and she says something along the lines that there's greedy people. So there's definitely, there was a lot of conflict I get leading up to her death. Um, you know, in the years, at least two years prior, there was a lot of going back and forth. I feel like she got to the point where, you know, the, all the girls, they were very frustrated. Even though they got along, they were like sisters, there was issues amongst each other, you know, and... But at the end, they still loved each other, you know, as sisters. And they knew it wasn't about them, this whole... Um, you know, these whole upsets that they would have had, uh, discussions, uh, anger, you know, 
and Lisa was someone that she was a Gemini. She was born on May 27th, so I'm a Gemini too. I can tell you for one thing that Lisa didn't have a bad bone in her body. And even though some people criticize Geminis as being, you know, bipolar or having a good and dark side, we all have a duality. But Lisa was someone who was super intuitive and she really knew there were spirits around her. Do I believe she was haunted? Yes, I do. I don't believe that she was haunted because she did anything bad. I don't get that from her. You know, there's a lot of people speculating that she sold her soul, you know, the Illuminati, all that mess. Okay, those are conspiracy theories. I'm not going by a conspiracy theory. Does the Illuminati exist? Possibly. You know, are there people that sell their souls? Possibly. But I don't get that from Lisa. You know, she was someone, if she would have done this, you know, like some people would speculate or conspiracy theories, she would have had so much fame, you know, and risen, to the, risen all the way to the top like a lot of singers today, a lot of people she didn't the group didn't get that far yes they had success yes they had uh a lot of you know records broken and stuff but it wasn't to the levels that they could have gotten you know it was it was cut short and with lisa she had a lot of these discussions with t-balls uh and with chili she wasn't happy she had thought about i feel like almost like giving up or quitting the group um, and saying no more. She wasn't going to go into the studio anymore because that's what I'm getting from her soul because she was tired of they were working their butts off. I mean, literally, you have to consider nothing was like it is today where you have like a lot of assistance and things. There's technology. Uh, back then in the 90s when they were, you know, together, um, it was a lot different. There wasn't a lot of technology like it is today. Things were more manually done, calling you know, uh, faxing, it wasn't really electronic emails. So in many ways they had it, um, they had a lot of hard hours that they had to put in a lot of traveling, a lot of, un, uh, restlessness, no sleep. Um, and Lisa was tired of it. She was tired, but even all through that, she, uh, was someone that was having visions. She had visions of, and she had, uh, dreams, dark dreams about, um, people be uh, chasing her. I feel like the dreams were darker in nature that she had. There were nightmares and, um, she would wake up, you know, and I feel like she had some fear of sleeping and I feel like she had conversations with the girls and the girls actually kind of believed T-Boz. I mean, uh, believed Lisa in many ways. They, they did realize that, you know, what she told them. Cause I know that T-Boz knows about the conversations that they had, um, that she would have shared with them about her dreams and things that she felt. So I feel like she would tell the girls, Hey girls, you know, I just feel like this and this is going down. This is not, this is going to happen eventually. Uh, it's like she knew certain things, you know, when you're a clairvoyant, you can kind of see not necessarily like a fortune teller and see the future. That's not how our gifts work, but we can see future snippets of things at times, whatever God allows us to see. Um, cause the gift is, is comes from God, regardless of who, you know, disputes, where it's coming from. Um, and I do feel like she was very connected to God, very connected to the divine source. Uh, and she saw, she foresaw darkness and she knew that there was going to be a lot of problems. And I feel like in a way, this is why she ended up in jail, you know, after, uh, burning that, that house that she had, um, you know, and a lot of problems with her, her relationships, everything was stemming from the music, from the group, uh, not the group, the girls, but the work schedule. Uh, it wasn't a peace. She didn't have a peaceful life. It wasn't a, a life because she was famous, you know, now, and she had money that it was like, everybody thinks, you know, oh, well that can solve all your problems. Like there's a lot of things that you don't realize that even with money, it brings a lot of problems. Uh, it's not always like, you know, peaches and cream. It's, it's not smooth. It's not a, a good, you know, always a, the best thing. It's sometimes money is leads to the downfall. And I see a lot of heartbreak. She was, um, angry, very upset at being cheated on. And I feel like there was a lot of, um, backstabbing going on from the people in the record company, uh, against the group, the girl group, um, where they would, you know, schedule them for certain, uh, things without running it by them. And it's like, 
they didn't have a say. And so I feel like those were the discussions that they had, you know, that they wanted to be included in the memos. They wanted to be included in knowing where they were going. They were The company was doing things without them even knowing and using some of their money for things that, you know, they didn't approve or sign off on. And so this is where the problem began with a lot. This is what I'm getting. All of this is coming from Lisa Soul. Um, this is where um, all the problems began with um, – with the group, you know, uh, having all the stress and the girls kind of, you know, getting sick. I feel like a T-Boss got sick with her, even though she has sickle cell anemia. I believe that's what she has, sickle cell. Uh, that's contributed to her, her disease as well, to that illness. All the stress from this group. There was a lot of speculations where they cursed. Was Lisa cursed? Because when she took the trip to Honduras, her driver accidentally ran over a boy and killed him, a little boy. And uh, Lisa paid for the family, uh, for the funeral of the little boy, and the family gave her a pair of his shoes. And people believe that, you know, there's there's speculation and rumors and videos that um, those shoes were cursed. And that's not the case. I don't get that. Um, were there dark spirits following Lisa that wanted uh, to cause problems? Yes. And uh, being that she was, I don't feel like she, I feel like she knew what she had, kind of like the ability, but she didn't know how to protect herself from it. Um, because back then, again, there wasn't a lot of exposure to the new age. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of exposure to psychics and mediums and gifts and protection tools. So I don't feel like she was surrounded by people that would have been able to help her in many ways. So that's why she went to Honduras for a spiritual retreat and also to get protection from whatever was following her. So she was being guided divinely by, um, by higher power. However, I do get that she would have had visions and there was things that happened uh, even to the girls on set when before her trip to Honduras, when they would have been on set. You know, there were strange things that happened and that makes T-Boz and Chili kind of question, you know, what Lisa told them and feel like there was some validity to that. And a lot of people are saying, you know, well, that's superstition, that's hogwash, you know, we really don't want to believe that that is really, you know, people that are skeptic and that believe that this was truly an accident that, you know, caused her death. But I don't get that at all. And I'll get into that in just a minute. But um, she did know that there was a lot of greediness and she did, you know, she was someone that was uh, that sh shook up a lot of people in the in the record company. I feel like she would have had some powerful things that she said uh, and she had temper. She did have a temper and she would go off on them. And she was she was serious about this. I feel like the record company didn't take it seriously until she went to Honduras. It was like that was the wake up call for them that, hey, she's not happy. And I feel like um, whoever she went, um, wherever she went for the retreat, there was going to be a revelation there to her about, you know, the future and what was coming up. So I don't know if they had like these circles, these group circles at nighttime where they would get in like in a group of prayer and um, meditation. But I do feel that she had some revelations of what was going to uh, occur. I don't feel like she passed when she was supposed to. This was uh, before her time. It was an unexpected passing. I feel like it wasn't a, a natural or accidental passing. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, I do feel like she was being pursued by someone with a lot of power uh, in the in the music industry, and she kind of you know didn't like that they were trying to control or um, trying to manipulate her because she was very talented, and they wanted to manipulate her in some kind of way, you know, to gain. Uh, gain her on their team and she would make more money because again they looked at these girls like machines money making machines they weren't really um they weren't really treated the way that they should have been treated and i know that if t boss or lisa uh t boss or chili are listening to this they can agree you know that they were not treated things were not pleasant there was a lot of uh, betrayal a lot of lies that they would have endured in that uh time period um Lisa saying that they even, um, you know, they made a lot of promises to them about what they were going to give them. And none of those things came to fruition. And that was a time when they needed it the most. There was a lot of, you know, of help that they, they needed and they were promised and they never got that. They never got that. And to me, what I get from Lisa Souls, like she was always fighting, fighting for the girls, fighting for herself, 
to uh, be understood and justified. But in her home life, there was a lot of chaos, a lot of darkness, a lot of uh, upset, a lot of um, a lot of change that was happening right before her her death. Um, now, going to Honduras, I feel like there was definitely foul play. I get that the vehicle that they were in, it was, there was supposedly it's about 10 people in the vehicle. But what I find very odd is that the vehicle itself, like there's footage of her holding a Coca-Cola tin box up to a camera. And the video cameraman is recording the inside of the vehicle when Lisa swerves and loses control and goes and hits the trees. She was on the road and she swerves to the left on that video. Um, that is so odd. It, it's so odd, you know, in the video that they show um, that she, why would, first of all, why would they be recording the last moments, you know? And there was nine, uh, 10 people in the vehicle, nine people survived. Lisa was the only one to die. Okay. What's wrong with that picture? Because she was the driver, because she didn't have a seatbelt. I, I don't believe none of them had their seatbelts on either. You know, and I feel like there somebody in that vehicle knew the situation. And I get that that vehicle, something with the, the, the axle, the wheels, it locked up completely. That vehicle was sabotaged. It was sabotaged and they knew... First of all, why wasn't anyone else behind the wheel? Why was it Lisa? You know, those are the questions. Why was the, Lisa behind that wheel and not somebody else? And why was she the one driving? Yes, she liked to drive. Yes, you know, she liked to take control. Something doesn't add up. And that's what I'm getting from her soul. And she doesn't want to blame anyone. She's fine and she's in peace. But she says there's somebody that was in that vehicle that survived that knows the truth. And I feel like that is something that Chili and T-Boss have always felt deeply in, in their soul. There's somebody that knows the truth. Either they, they, they speculated or they felt it or they know. But I feel like they know. And I feel like it's a female. To be honest, it's a female. And I get that they were paid as well. You know? Uh, but the the thing is here from all of this that is really disconcerting is that this thing was filmed almost like they wanted to film it for some reason to later show it, you know, the last moments and the face of Lisa, you know, you can tell when someone's under the influence um, by the facial expressions. She was very coherent. She wasn't someone that looked like she was driving behind the wheel and she was, you know, on drugs or she had substances in her system. She was very coherent. She had a serious look in her face. One, almost like she didn't want to be there in the first place behind the wheel. Second of all, she didn't want to be driving at that time. And again, if she went to Honduras for a spiritual retreat and to clear herself and her energy, I don't feel like she would have been the one that wanted to to drive. It was almost like a conversation between the group of people. And they were like, you know, you're the best driver, Lisa. Go ahead and drive and take over. You know, and they say that, well, she, you know, was in a different country and that the roads were, you know, a different, you know, the vehicles. It's It's all different over there. But I don't get, you know, that that's the case. I don't get it at all. Like she would have seen like the roads, even though there are different in those countries um, and they may be a little narrow and whatnot, you usually, you know, they're, they're not like paved roads or like dirt roads. They're very underdeveloped over there. So traction, you know, would have um, been different, but I get something with the wheels of the vehicle and it kind of like locked up and uh, when it locked up and she tried to, you know, turn uh it swerved it kind of and she lost the control from it you know and that's what happened um it's 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 just very odd how you know and i get a lot of trauma to the body to the head but again the fact that none of the other passengers passed makes me think you know to a certain point what really happened inside that vehicle the moments after the camera went off and that vehicle was going to the trees and that's all i'm going to say 
So it's like, I just get foul play. I'm sorry, I do. I get foul play, and I know a lot of you out there that would be listening to this get foul play. Something happened in that vehicle that is not being said, and that people are gonna are carrying with themselves. They know there's 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 a lot of there's something that went on in that vehicle when that camera went off and that vehicle was going towards the trees there's something that happened in that split second because the fact that nine people survived and lisa was the only one that didn't survive was her body ejected from the vehicle and was she beaten then make it look like it was you know you know, a possible uh, death by, you know, an accident. Again, this is just something that I'm, I'm putting out there. And it's very painful to discuss and painful for the fans to watch and um, to listen to. But it wasn't her time. And I don't care who says that it was her time. I don't feel that it was her time. When I tune into Souls, I can feel... Uh, what they feel. And Lisa knew that they were after her. She knew that there was dark energies whether these were spirits or just people also um i feel like it wasn't just spirits that were after her you know the when i say after her is because she's she was a medium and someone that has abilities spirits are automatically uh, attracted to you and they're going to follow you anywhere you go but i do feel in my heart of hearts that um this was a sabotage it was a setup it was all foul play her death and the reason for that, you know, people would be thinking, well, what is the reason for that was because, again, she wanted the money. And I feel like there was eventually going to be legal issues that she was going to get in with the people in power to get clarity and get get their money. She was serious. She was someone that I feel like did, you know, didn't really think before she spoke many times. And so I feel like she did kind of, you know, give some, you know. Could it be like threats that she would have given or sent out, you know, or said things that were a little powerful that would have been taken or perceived as a threat? Possibly. But who is responsible for it? You know, that is something I can't say uh, on this video for my safety and whatnot. But again, there is something here that is not adding up. And I've looked at interviews from the girls or not the girls, but one of the girls that was in the vehicle. And she talks about it, and I just something just didn't set right with me in my soul about it. Again, I get you know this is would have been something that was like like a foul play, and I don't feel like upon impact she passed. I don't. So um, this is what I'm getting from um, from Lisa's soul. She is okay um, for T. Boz. You know she wants her to know. She's, she was like a sister to her and always will be, and she thanks her for joking around. There's this vision that um, Lisa keeps showing me that she would have taken off like a shoe and thrown it at somebody when they were sitting like around a couch or, or a, um, an area. So she got like a shoe or something. I feel like it was a shoe, and she threw it across the room. You know, Lisa was like that, you know, and she, she was just, you know, very... Um, funny very hilarious there was this vision i don't know if it was a shoe exactly but that's what i see in the vision and i also feel like you know she would have been someone that would have always been like trying to jump on other people you know and you know like when somebody comes behind you you kind of jump on them and they kind of carry you like you know that's what i kind of get from her that she would have been that kind of person to kind of try to uh, prank and be a jokester and surprise people and you know, she was funny and deep down, but I feel like uh, over time, over the years, you know, it, the group changed her. The the battles that she had to face uh, changed her. But was she um, spiritual? Yes. Did she have abilities to see things? Yes. Was she fully aware that this um, that she was going to pass at an early age? I want to say she she had a feeling. She had a feeling like. There was something and someone after her and that it wasn't going to to end well. And again, I feel like her dreams kind of foretold it, you know, kind of like a prophecy in many ways. Her dreams kind of showed her the outcome eventually from it. And I do feel like there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of uh, 
still a lot of pain in in the group and the family you know that they over the years they've kind of made some sense of it but i do feel like t boz and chili you know they kind of you know um had some fear after her passing as well and it was a very hard hard thing for them to uh to accept for chili the one of the messages before i wrap up this reading that uh lisa is saying is that um she does love her a hundred percent and she thanks her for um honoring her memory so i don't know if uh chili got some kind of tattoo or did something in commemoration of lisa but she says thank you so it's like and she's showing me white doves as well just like in the video white doves and they're flying out so i don't know if they've done like a ceremony or something after her passing kind of to release something in memory of her but i'm definitely getting something uh to commemorate uh lisa so i want to thank everyone for listening and knowing that um that lisa is okay she is in a good place that this is very real um never judge a book by its cover even though she was a tough girl and she had a, a tough woman you know and a tough cookie and she had this uh this rough exterior on the outside she knew things and she could feel things they were very very real that that ha happened you know and that are happening and don't discredit you know if you ever feel like someone if one of your favorite singers etc um is like you know has abilities you know don't count it out don't discount it because a lot of these celebrities they're in a uh, and a pu they have a public mission, you know, by the universe, and they are being put in that position for a reason. And out of the girl group, Lisa was the one that was awakened, spiritually awakened. Not that T Boss wasn't awakened or Chili at all. They were spiritually awakened after her passing, but Lisa was the one that was spiritually awoke during the time of the group, and she saw many things and she knew. So I'm sending biggest hugs out to um, t Boz and Chili and the family of Lisa and their families and um, and her fans. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anyone else that you would like for me to do a reading on, please comment in the comment section below. Um, please keep it clean in the, in the comment section. I don't want to have to disable comments on this video because, again, you know, you may not – I don't expect you to agree with me. I don't expect you to, you know – um believe this but this is what i get uh from you know the soul and what i see visions from you know things that her soul communicated to me today so uh blessings and love and light have an amazing day